All right. Well, thank you, Drea. Good afternoon and welcome to our West Virginia meet and greet. We are so excited to have you all here as well as um, just to share more about West Virginia Virtual Academy. So before we jump into our presentation, we do wanna go over a few housekeeping rules. During this session, we unfortunately will not be able to give individual updates on current applications. During our time together, we really wanna focus on sharing more about West Virginia Virtual Academy and provide a space to answer any questions about the application process, current openings, and anything else that is related to West Virginia Virtual Academy. For all of these questions, you can feel free to put them in that Q&A box and we will be sure to address them. If you have any questions relating to your specific application, you can send an email on over to recruiting at k12.com and we will get that answered. We have a few presenters joining us here today and during our time, you will be hearing from them. So to get to know everyone a little bit better, we are gonna go ahead and introduce ourselves. I will go first. My name is Megan Payne and I am the academic recruiter for West Virginia Virtual Academy. I have been with Stride for almost four years now and I work closely with our schools on the East Coast and I'm excited to be with you all today. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Molly Morales, and I am on the academic support team here at Stride, and I support schools throughout the Eastern region, um, including uh, launching West Virginia Virtual Academy. So I'm very excited about that and to uh, get to know you all a little bit and share some information with you today. I have been with Stride for two years, and it is a great place to work. Hi everyone, my name is Megan Siebert and I work alongside Molly as an academic support specialist uh, for Stride. This is going on my ninth year at Stride and I love getting to support all the different schools in their academic programs. So great to meet everyone. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Kimberly Schell. I'm actually one of the National Special Programs Managers, so I support the schools with special education, English learner programs, Section 504, um, and title programs. Um, this will be my, I'm actually just wrapping up my sixth year with Stride, and I'm excited to be working with our West Virginia school that's launching. Thank you all. So who exactly is Stride? Well, Stride, formerly known as K-12, we have become a leader in online education. We started our first schools back in 2000 and we have continued to grow for 22 years. We are able to reach students across the country from kindergarten all the way to high school. And we truly believe that we can tap into students' unique potential through our teachers and administrators. We as a company realize that learning is a lifelong journey and that it does come in many forms. Within this realization, we have built our virtual classrooms that support learners truly at every stage. Today, we are going to focus on one of our new schools, West Virginia Virtual Academy, and I am gonna pass this over to Molly who will share more. Yes. Um, so we are really excited that this will be the first year that Stride is going to be uh, launching a school in West Virginia. Um, to start off this year, we are going to be offering school to grades K through 10. We will, uh, we predict about 12 to 24 teachers and that's going to be dependent on our enrollment. Um, and we expect 500 to 1000 students in our first year. Um, some interesting facts about the school, it's going to be a career prep school. So middle school students will be able to participate in survey courses and high school students will have the opportunities to complete pathways in uh, various fields. As a teacher at West Virginia Virtual Academy, you could expect to be offered professional development opportunities, both in person and online. Um, outings throughout the year and just a lot of different opportunities to connect with each other, with the teaching staff, uh, with your leadership and the training teams.
Thank you, Molly. So teaching at West Virginia Virtual, Virtual Academy might look a little bit different. And so we're gonna pass this on over to Megan, who's gonna give us more of an insight about what it looks like for all of our teachers. Absolutely, thanks. So teaching for a virtual school, although it is virtual, often still resembles a brick and mortar school where you'll have a traditional school day. You'll be teaching in whole group and small group classes throughout the day. Um, as a teacher at West Virginia Virtual Academy, um, you will have a group of students that are assigned to you as your classroom. And then you will schedule sessions uh, throughout your day to work with those students. As you are teaching your students, similar to how we're on the microphone and camera, um, you will be on the camera and microphone with your students using a platform called Neuro, which is similar to Zoom. Um, and that's how you'll interact with your students during those live sessions. So as we are working out the teaching schedule, nothing has been finalized yet, but some of your classes might be 30 minutes long. Some of them might be 60 minutes long based on your schedule and your teaching. The great thing about working for Stride is we have our own curriculum. So you will have a curriculum provided for you. It's all online based. Students are able to work through it and it does a lot of the grading for you. Um, but you are also able to grade as well and get such powerful data. So that's one of the perks of Stride is that curriculum and that data piece that will really let you get to know your students, know what they know and know what they need to uh, continue to work on. And then also through that platform, um, you'll be communicating with your students. So since we're not in a, a live classroom with them and we can't uh, put notes in their backpacks, um, you're going to be reaching out to your students frequently through phone calls, emails, um, having meetings, having different small groups or support sessions to really help those students that are not physically with you, but still building those relationships, um, building those connections and interacting with your students and their families as a whole team approach to their to their learning. And then, although it is virtual, um, we love to get our staff together. Um, for professional development. Um, now that COVID is kind of simmered down, you know, we'd like to get teachers together, uh, build that community and build that skill set. And so that is something that will be occasionally happening, not often, but something to be planning for. School testing, statewide testing does happen in person. And so that'll be something that will require some travel and then the fun field trips. So schools might West Virginia might set up some outings that you get to meet your students, um, meet other staff and do a field trip together as a teacher. Thank you so much, Megan. So now if you're thinking about and you're ready to apply, we know that there are a few questions about our positions and we wanted to cover a few um, frequently asked questions. So for all of our open roles, we do require that our candidates have an active West Virginia teaching certification. Um, we do need this before we can move on with any applications. So when you are applying, there is an option to upload this document into your profile. And we do ask that all candidates upload this into their profile so that we can move the process along swiftly. For residency, we are requiring all of our staff to live in the state of West Virginia. Just as Megan mentioned those in-person requirements, we just wanna keep our staff within the state. For our salary, we are starting our range off at 41,000 and it does work on a salary scale. We also offer a performance bonus of up to 5% um, and that is something that is yearly. So with the, those, we have some more perks that are involved with um, being a Stride employee. So we do offer full benefits. We offer medical, dental, and vision, as well as a 401k plan. Our PTO for teachers um, is a spring break, winter break, summer break, all of the federal holidays that are listed on the school calendar, as well as 10 days to use as PTO throughout the school year um, as sick or personal. We also are offering a few PTO days to all of our staff to allow for volunteer or time off to vote. Some more perks that we have, if you are looking to continue on with your education, we do offer a $5,000 annual tuition reimbursement, as well as a partnership with Southern New Hampshire University. 
With this partnership with Southern New Hampshire University, we do allow 100% paid for master's in education to all of our Stride employees. Um, this program is also done virtually online. In addition to that, we also have a referral bonus. We know that some of our best candidates come to us as referrals and we encourage referrals. We offer a bonus of up to $1,000 for every referral that is hired and stays on with us. And there's no limit as to how many referrals you can send our way. Gym benefits, as you can see on this slide too, we do have a few different gym options um, that you can also use as a part of being with Stride. So aside from being able to work from the comfort of your home, doing what you love, we also offer these additional benefits to all of our employees. The hiring process. So now that you have heard from our team more about West Virginia Virtual Academy and have a better idea of what it is like to be a stride teacher, we and you're aware of all the benefits that come with a position with us and you feel like you're ready to apply, you can go ahead and visit our website, which I believe is also in the chat box, um, but www.stridelearning.com slash careers. On this website, you will find all of our open teacher positions. After you visit that website, you can go into our search bar and filter by West Virginia, as well as looking into what position you're interested in teaching. The next step would be to register your email and to create an account with us. With this, uh, just note that the email, we do ask that your email is one that is active. Unfortunately, that is the only thing that cannot be changed on your profile. So we do ask that it is an active email address. After you apply um, or after you create your account, we go ahead and apply for as many positions as you are certified and interested in teaching. Um, we do encourage you to apply for more. After you apply to the positions that you see fit, a recruiter will review your application, and if you are selected, then you will be moved on to a higher view. During your higher view, you will be asked a series of questions as well as submit a recording of yourself teaching a lesson. After higher view, if the hiring team wishes to move on, then you will be moved to a final interview, which does take into which is a phone interview or a virtual face-to-face -face interview. After this final interview, if the hiring team wishes to move forward, then an offer will be extended. So this is our hiring process in a nutshell. And if there's any questions, please do put those in the Q&A box and we will be sure to address them. At the beginning of the presentation, we did mention that West Virginia Virtual Academy is a new school. So while we are looking for all positions, we have a few highlighted ones on the screen here. We are looking for special education teachers of all grade levels, CTE and CRE teachers, as well as high school and middle school teachers. All of these positions are posted online at that website down below. And then just remember that keyword, that key the search down below to put in West Virginia as well as the job title that is listed. All right, so that wraps up um, our presentation. Now we will go ahead and dive into that Q&A box um, for any questions that the team has. Go ahead and pull this up. Um, so this is a really good question. Um, and Kimberly, since you are on with us, I was just wondering if maybe you could share a little bit about what it is like to be a special education teacher with us um, at West Virginia Virtual Academy, um, and then specifically maybe what the typical caseload looks like for those teachers. Absolutely. So just like any other public school, we um, we adhere to the same federal and state and local requirements. We do provide special education services to students that are elig eligible and are, we follow the state and local requirements as far as caseload goes. Um, in regards to what a typical day looks like for a special education teacher, you have a caseload of students that are assigned to you. Um, you're responsible for providing specially designed instruction for those students, as well as case management services, 
Typically, um, we offer a full continuum of services based on whatever the student's needs are um, according to their IEP. So if a student needs a smaller self-contained program, we provide that. If we have students who would benefit from a resource program or a pullout program for certain subjects, we offer that. And then we also do full inclusion with co-teaching or push-in support. So it's very... Um, we want to offer a full continuum of services to students um, based on what their specific needs are. Um, we do provide related services for all of our students based on their needs. So if a student needs speech and language, um, speech, language therapy, occupational therapy, physical therapy, social work, or any of those other related services, we provide those either in an online format or in person, um, depending on what that student's needs are. And um, we, just like you would in a brick and mortar school, we have um, our teachers working with students in small groups individually. Um, we do progress monitoring using similar tools that you would find in a traditional setting. Um, and then we, um, we, we provide accommodations and what you'll find is a lot of accommodations that typically have to be written into a student's IEP in a brick and mortar setting are naturally provided to students in our setting. So we already have a read aloud tool um, built into our curriculum. Um, a lot of our students who may require assistive technology for writing um, no longer need to have that as an accommodation because all of our students are provided that accommodation or that tool. Um, same thing with um, extended time, the ability to re-watch um, recorded Class Connect sessions. Um, so what we find is that a lot of our students who have accommodations in a traditional setting um, no longer need to have those accommodations um, written into their IEPs in a virtual setting. Great. Thank you so much for sharing that. That was definitely helpful. Um, a lot of the questions that I also get when I'm communicating with candidates is around the curriculum. Uh, Megan or Molly, could one of you speak about the curriculum that's used with um, for our STRI teachers? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the curriculum is created mostly with using um, the common core standards, so they are adjusted based on the state. So, you know, Stride is very mindful of looking at making sure that our curriculum matches West Virginia state standards um, so that you have everything in place. Uh, the curriculum based, you know, for the elementary is very game-like. It has a lot of animations. It has a lot of cartoons. Um, it has a lot of practice opportunities. So as the students are clicking through it, they're interacting with the material, there's practice opportunities, and then they are able to mark it complete or the computer will mark it complete once they have shown that not only have they put the time into that section of the curriculum, but they've also shown mastery. So if the students click through the curriculum, but they actually don't practice and they don't show that they know the material um, on your end as a teacher and on their end as a student, it's not going to mark it complete. Um, at the high school level, there's a little less of the game like a little less animation, um, but it's still very rigorous. It's very inclusive. Um, I, a lot of the feedback we get from our teachers and from our students that there's a lot. Uh, there's definitely not a huge need to supplement. And there's just a lot of material, a lot of great activities. And um, I'm trying to think of anything else in particular that stands out curriculum wise. I will just put the link to the uh, West Virginia Virtual Academy website in the chat, because if you go on that website, you can explore based on your uh, area of expertise, if you teach high school or elementary school, and there are some sample lessons and some resources and guidance on the type of curriculum that you can look at on that website. Perfect. Thank you. 
Thank you both. That's very helpful. Um, I see one question that is, how long does the hiring process take, particularly after completing the hire view segment? Will someone let me know if I if you are not chosen and what is the projected start date for school? Um, so we are trying to move pretty quickly to get our teachers um, hired and onboarded, as well as communicating to anyone we are not moving forward with. Um, so our start date for teachers is July 1st. And the anticipated start date for school is um, later in August. So that is the timeline that we are trying to get our teachers onboarded staff trained and ready to rock and roll by. Um, and then someone will let you know if you are chosen to not move forward with this position as well. Um, I see another question. Uh, can you pick the grades you want to teach? So with during the interview process, we are definitely looking at the certifications as well as experience when trying to place um, our staff into specific grades. Um, we are still working on enrollment. So our enrollment is still, um, you know, that's still a big determining factor. Uh, going off that question kind of, um, Molly and Megan, I don't know if one of you can address this, but how big are the typical class sizes for our schools? That is something that is still being determined, but our ratio for elementary is one teacher to 60 students at this point. Okay, great, thank you. There's definitely a lot still going into place with this school. Um, and so the next question I, I was gonna ask was, how are the class schedules determined? Is that still based off of the enrollment coming in or is there um, a specific schedule that we kind of follow, things like that? That is still being determined. You know, there's a lot of decisions that uh, still need to be made and are in the process of being made right now and finalized. Um, but you can take a look at the website. The calendar is up on the website so you can get a, an idea of the holidays and the year. Um, and we do look at uh, Charleston, West Virginia, where the headquarters of the school will be, sort of as our guidance of uh, planning and scheduling and that sort of thing. Thank you. And I see that there was an answer question about the CTE program. Um, so we, it looks like this for everyone, if anyone missed it, but the CTE programs we are looking to host at West Virginia Virtual Academy are going to be business, health science, information technology, manufacturing, and marketing. So those are some of them. Um, I do see another question about the platform that Stride is using, and I think, Megan, you spoke about that, um, how it's very similar to Zoom, uh, things like that. Um, it, I don't know, is there anything additional to add to that or just kind of, um, kind of like what we're using right now, or you're seeing your students, they're seeing you, and you're chatting with them? Correct. It's very similar to Zoom. Um, you're able to share any sort of document. Um, you're able to use whiteboard tools together so you can interact on the screen with your students, um, cameras, microphones, chat boxes, um, breakout rooms. So it's very similar to Zoom. It's just a different, different platform. Awesome. Thank you. Another um, question I wanted to bring up was about the pay schedule. I know that in certain states and different counties, uh, sometimes staff is used to being paid once a month. Uh, we are actually bi-weekly, so we pay every other Friday with, um, with our company. I just see a question come in about agriculture. Is agriculture one of the CTE programs that we are offering? Um, my understanding is at this time, we are not offering that. Uh, hopefully in the future, as we continue to grow, we can continue to add on more courses. Um, but at this time, it's uh, sticking mostly to that business, health science, information technology, manufacturing and marketing. All right. Any other questions coming in from the participants or did anyone on our panelists want to share anything more? Um, I do see a couple about the longevity of employment with West Virginia. So um, while our staff does different is with enrollment, uh, we do hope and plan to see it continue to grow. 
What I will say is that a lot of the time, um, if something does happen as a company, Stride is all over the country and we do work very closely with our other schools. Whereas if um, we do have to you know, place a teacher in a different state, we do work very closely. There is something to already having that knowledge behind teaching with our Stride schools and with our programs. So we do work very closely with our other schools if that needs to happen. Um, Megan, someone was asking about the platform that we used. Did we already talk about uh, yes. size platform? We did. Thanks, Andrea. We did. We uh, Megan shared how it's very similar to Zoom, uh, which is kind of um, kind of interesting, kind of fun. I did see another question that came in about elementary schools and if it is a full-time job. Um, so yes, all of our teaching positions right now are a full-time job. Uh, it is full-time and while you might not necessarily be teaching from the entire day, there's definitely time built in for lesson planning as well as various meetings that you'd be attending, um, different things like that. But yes, we are a full-time position. Um, and then, um, Megan or Molly, has the school day been the, is it this hour has been determined quite yet? Um, typically our staff starts at 8 a.m. and I would say continues until about four or five, but also just keep in mind, um, I did teach when I was a couple of years ago and I do remember staying at the school very, very late to prepare for the next day. But um, some of the feedback I've heard from our teachers is that you really have all that time to really prepare and get um, ready for the next day. Um, I see another question that came in that was how many students per class in high school? Uh, so right now we are still uh, finalizing our enrollments. The numbers are still coming in and we don't exactly have that exact answer right now. Uh, we do have a, a ratio that we are working for with the elementary school. Um, is there a ratio that we are working for in the high school? I don't have the number available for the high school. Okay. Um, okay, I see another question coming in about the elementary school class each day. Um, I don't I don't believe that war, that is the case. Um, Megan or Molly, is there a, a breakdown about what an elementary school teacher might do or what their schedule might look like? I can give an example schedule of what it was like when I taught in Michigan. I don't know how it'll look in West Virginia, but it'll give you an idea of a sister school and how they worked it. Um, we were, our day started at 8 a.m. Um, we had a half an hour to kind of lesson plan, get our rooms up and running. At 8.30, I would start my first lesson, and it was a two-hour ELA block, and so I had my students live with me for two hours. Now, that wasn't me sitting talking to them for two hours, but, you know, breaking it up into different activities, and then they would take a break. I'd have a small group. We, they would, we would each have a little bit of time for lunch, and then we would have um, two one-hour sessions in the afternoon um, to meet and do math, and then some sort of you know, either science or social studies or an elective activity. Um, so that's kind of how it looked. I had about four hours of live teaching and then the time in between to do maybe a couple of small groups, those meetings, look at data. Um, and that's what it looked like when I was in Michigan. But West Virginia might, might look a little different either way. Great, thank you for sharing that. That definitely helps give a little bit of an insight into the day to day. Um, I see another question about the lesson that's required during the interview process. So when you are invited to that higher view, you are given an email that kind of states about um, what the lesson's going to look like and how you would present it. Uh, typically, I like to say, pretend that your students are on the other side and you are teaching to them and present it that way. We do give a little bit of flexibility in terms of what subject you'd like to teach, what grade level you'd like to teach, different things like that, just to make you have the choice to be able to put your best foot forward. So um, it is about a 10 or 15 minute lesson. We do ask that you record it on 
YouTube or another site that does have a, um, a shareable link so that our team can go ahead and view that. Uh, so that is the, that's kind of the lesson plan portion of the interview. And I do see a couple of questions about the salary. So yes, we do start at 41,000. Uh, we do have a small scale taken into consideration, which we would take into consideration years of experience and degrees uh, when working with that small scale that we do have. Um, and then also keep in mind that that 5% bonus, it is something that is up um, every year, typically at the end of the school year. And then the next question I see is with salary and or by downsizing, does all of our teaching experience come into play or is this just time with the company? Um, I would say that we try to take everything into consideration when looking at the whole candidate, um, looking if the candidate has experienced, you know, when determining salary, looking to see if the candidate has experience teaching online, um, if they do have advanced degrees and if they do have um, multiple experience, things like that are all taken into consideration with everything. So uh, we do try to, and as well as your performance review, if there's something that's, you know, from year to year. I will also say they, there is a small increase in salary from year to year, but it is a small one or 2% um, typically. See another good question about um, parents expected to be present for live classes. Um, so my understanding is that our younger students do have a learning coach, which is a guardian, um, and so they are helping the students out during these live classes. All right, well, it looks like there's no more questions coming in. Um, if anyone does have a, any other questions, you can absolutely feel free to reach out to myself, uh, my email, I'll go ahead and put it in that chat. You can send me an email if there's any questions um, that are still lingering. And then also definitely feel free to join us on all of our social media sites. We are on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and now Twitter. So you can take a look at all of those. Um, and then also, if you have questions about your application, you can reach us at recruiting uh, at k12.com. And then you can also email the talent team at k12.com too. And then also uh, our website right here to look at any um, positions that we have coming. And we look forward to seeing more applications rolling in. Thank you everyone for your time. Thank you everyone for attending. Thank you to our presenters for sharing your knowledge about K-12. Um, yeah, so thank you everyone.